What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, we're going to be talking about a string of potential insider information on Hogwarts Legacy. Now, this actually comes from our good old partner, Retro Rack and Tour. I've actually done stuff with him, okay? He's actually a person I talk to uh, outside of the channel, right? Uh, he has his own channel, and that's the name of the channel, Retro Rack and Tour. Great, great guy. Again, I've actually had a collaboration with him on this channel, and he's had a collaboration with me on his channel. And he posted this on Twitter, dropped a bombshell, and he talked about Hogwarts Legacy. So, you know, I want to treat him with respect. I want to treat him with more respect than I treat maybe other people. But we do have to be fair. We do have to be, um, you know, just aware that it could still be wrong. You know, you don't know 100% for sure. But he does sound very confident, which I like. I like the confidence. And uh, so let's just read through this. So he said, okay, well, never thought I'd be in a position to do this. But here goes. I've been hearing a few things behind closed doors relating to Hogwarts Legacy and its gameplay. First of all, I'm not a leaker or insider by any means. Well, I'm going to label him one. Those of uh, you who follow me know I'm just a dad who loves video games. Uh, and in this case, just a fan of Hogwarts Legacy who's been presented with info I believe is reliable. Why do I believe it? Well, number one, multiple sources have told me some, not all of the exact same details. Number two, photo evidence that I be uh, believe to be reliable. Sorry, I can't share this bit so something photographic uh okay so what's the info i'm hearing buckle up because there's a lot seven bits of info coming up number one the devs for hogwarts legacy were heavily inspired by the level design of ghost of tsushima the last was part two and the legend of zelda breath of the wild enemy camps number two enemy camps will be a core part of gameplay with combat stealth and exploration all playing a role Number three, the game will also include dungeons, and there was an entire team dedicated to designing those. Number four, there are multiple regions across the open world. Number five, relationships are in the game and have storylines designed to emotionally engage players. Number six, multiple towns, yes, towns plural, are included and feature NPCs with unique behaviors and conversations to make it feel like a living, breathing town. And number seven, day-night cycles are in the game, he said, I'm guessing seasons two, but that's not part of the info that I heard. All right, so let's kind of break it down here. Uh, the first part was that it was heavily inspired by Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Part Two, and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. We've actually heard a few games leaning into the Last of Us Part Two uh, train, you know, that, that kind of stuff. I have mixed thoughts, but, well, I have mixed thoughts with Last of Us Part Two. But the idea of, uh, you know, an open world, I think I get kind of what they're going for, especially when you keep going past like the next one so enemy camps will be a core part of gameplay with combat stealth and exploration all playing a role now the enemy camps that very very much reminds me of specifically ghost of tsushima right where you have like a compound you have to break in in some way you can handle it a couple different ways i mean it's not the most you know uh, i guess handle it the way you want to although you could argue it uh and you go from there right you clear out the the camp and, and go from there last of us part two in terms of level design, I would honestly go more towards like, uh, well, again, I guess a general and maybe even Legend of Zelda, just a general sense of handling things the way you want to be able to handle it, right? And again, enemy camps, combat, stealth, exploration, all having a role. Now, stealth is not something I immediately think of when I think of Hogwarts Legacy, uh, and maybe it's just because we didn't really see a lot of glimpses of that even um, in the trailer in terms of like, well, is there going to be like bushes to like crouch in or I just I, I don't. I don't know how specifically stealth-like Hogwarts Legacy would be, but I do think, as we talked about with spells and different uh, probably combinations that you'll be able to use, or I guess have with you in terms of spells, that your combat, the way you you know you engage in combat, definitely should be different depending on how you want to play. The dungeons, uh, that sounds reasonable. Um, you know, again, you, you think of, well, it's an open world game, so you need to give us things to do. Well, obviously side quests are things to do. Obviously main quests or things to do uh going to classes but like you know is there anything else and i'm sure you know quidditch or flying on the broomstick just in general right i'm sure there's other activities throughout the game um that you can do to oh, not pad the time but it's just yeah you know, it's there to add to the overall 
you know, experience. And then when you add a dungeon, I like the idea. I like it. Um, you know, randomized. Uh, maybe you get like a reward at the end of it. I mean, that's what kind of a dungeon is in general. I, I think that's a smart move and it could be really, really cool. Now, the rest of these in one way or the other, I feel like we've either talked about them or just heavily assumed that they were happening, right? So I'm not saying, you know, they're lame or anything. I'm just saying like, okay, well, we, we have talked about these things. So at least this part could be a little bit shorter. Multiple regions across the open world, you know, self-explanatory relationships are in the game and have storylines designated uh, to emotionally uh, engage players relationships are in the game and have storylines designed to emotionally engage players um, I don't well relationships exist obviously and we've actually said this before you know you can only take relationships so far when you're supposed to be like 14 15 you know what I mean so I don't know how far you know they they would go with like an emotional or like what you would actually I guess like you know what you would actually do um but to develop a relationship with another person and you know to just have dialogue and to be able to maybe upset the person or to make them happy or whatever i like i mean uh, it, it's a, it's an open world choose your own you know adventure kind of thing there needs to be dialogue options there needs to be different ways of engaging with students different ways uh, ways of engaging with love interests so again you know a lot of that stuff makes sense i would honestly be more upset if those things weren't in the game because i would kind of just assume that they are Multiple towns are included and feature NPCs with unique behaviors and conversation to make it feel like a living, breathing town. Again, should be self-explanatory, should be almost uh, not demand. Well, demanded is a tough word, right? Because then you get into like, well, how much, uh, how many things do you need to demand in, in any given game? But it's, you know, it's something that I think we deserve. It's something that I think uh, an open world game should have that kind of aspect. So again, that's nothing uh, too mind blowing. And then the day night cycles are in the game. Again, we kind of, you know, read into that a little bit. Uh, I we made vid I made a video specifically on day night cycles and I made videos a video specifically on um, uh, seasons which is another thing that he said well he said he's only guessing seasons too but that's not part of the info that I heard that's actually kind of interesting that he didn't hear about seasons it almost makes me think that there won't be any seasons uh, we'll have to see we'll have to see but uh, you know day night cycles that's cool that's cool especially again when you're exploring uh honestly i think dying light does it reasonably well where it's like the game well no I, I don't really think hogwarts legacy can match what dying light does in terms of its day night cycle but the idea of dying light 2 is like the game does change and you can do different things entirely when it becomes day or night so i i like that idea a lot i don't think you have to do it exactly like one-to-one -one for hogwarts legacy but i do think the idea of making things maybe locked at certain parts of the day you can only come back at, at other parts of it right uh, and engage with them i like all of that so that's what and, and you know dying light just came out it's a good example to kind of lean into so we'll see how hogwarts does it so that's the news again take it with a grain of salt uh, some of the things again are pretty self-explanatory or maybe even obvious some of the things are not so much obvious so we'll have to see, you know, if we can kind of read into maybe the next time they show us gameplay or the only time they show us gameplay, uh, maybe we can kind of read into it and say, oh, you know, that, that stuff that we've, we've heard before that made its way in. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Bell icon turn on. He, uh, Retro Raconteur made his own video uh, on this, I think, explaining it more in detail. So if you guys want to check out his channel, again, an amazing, amazing guy. He covers a lot of just Hogwarts Legacy stuff as well. So if you're not subscribed to him, you know, go do that. I'm sure he would appreciate you guys. Again, he's a, he's a really humble, nice guy. So if you guys want to follow me anywhere else on social media, I have a Twitter. I have a second YouTube channel. I also have Patreon and YouTube memberships. The links for them all are in the description below. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you all on the next video.